Elizabeth Cook is here now. Also a big night across the country where control of Congress is at stake. You're going to take it away for us there. This is the headline of the night, Jules. Mm -hmm. What happens tonight could determine whether President Joe Biden can get anything accomplished for the next two years. Now, as you know, Democrats have held both chambers of Congress for the last two years, but by a very narrow margin. Let's start in the Senate. First, we're watching our current California Senator Alex Padilla. He is running to keep his seat after he was appointed by Governor Newsom when Kamala Harris became the vice president. This one won't really be a surprise. Padilla is the heavy favorite to win here over Republican Mark Moisure. But there are some very competitive Senate races across the country. Here are the six states to watch. We have Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and New Hampshire. Now, these contests are considered toss-ups in states like Georgia and Nevada. It's a tight race between Republican challengers and the Democratic incumbent. Pennsylvania, another razor-thin race. Now, here's why it's so important. The Senate is now split with 50-50 with Vice President Kamala Harris as the tie-breaking vote. Now, if Democrats lose just one seat, Republicans could take the Senate. Now, in the battle for the House, California could play a pivotal role. While we're a very heavy blue state, there are two races. We're watching the Central Valley, and we're also watching some races down in Orange County as well. Well, both districts are considered toss-ups. Now, all 435 House seats are up for re-election, or up for election, I should say. Democrats hold 220 seats. Republicans have 212, very thin margin, and that could all change tonight. A shift of only five seats would transfer control of the House to Republicans. Now, if the House takes control, Kevin McCarthy from Bakersfield here in California is poised to become the new speaker. And there is a big question about current House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's future. If Democrats lose the majority, they could be pressure for a change in leadership there. Let's get now to Reed Cowan, who is with our political analysts, to talk about the ramifications of all of this. What does this mean? Yeah, you really set the scene very, very well. And we're lucky to have some smart minds in the studio with us tonight. I'm joined by University of San Francisco political science professor James Taylor and San Jose State Professor of Political Science Donna Crane. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. So let's start general now that Liz has sort of set the scene. What are you watching for tonight? What I'm watching for is Katie uh, 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 Porter in Orange County in District 47 to see how that goes, because I think depending on how that goes, there are about five other uh, districts and competitive uh, seats down there that will tell us whether or not this is going to be a, a red wave. If Katie Porter goes, uh, you might see some other popular national Democrats go. And as the lead-in suggested, Nancy Pelosi might end up retiring as she's hinting after this attack on her family that, you know, this is probably the end of the road for her. She's definitely signaled that she will make a decision based on tonight's result. Uh, Professor Crane, what do you think about this? What do you think about the balance of power? What do you think about where we're headed tonight? A lot of people are watching social media. They're watching the returns here on Five. We're really having a community conversation, right? Mm -hmm. What's this conversation going to be around the water cooler in the morning? Oh, well, I'm watching for two main things. I'm watching for control of the Senate. Uh, Mitch McConnell would like to be majority leader again. And if McConnell takes over the Senate and Republicans take over the House as well, then we're looking at a real split power between a Democratic White House and a Republican Congress. I wouldn't expect anything productive to get done in the next two years. I'm also looking at something uh, a little bit more abstract. I'm looking to see if some of these election deniers, some of these um, candidates who have said the 20 20 election wasn't fair. I'm looking to see if they win their races for secretary of state in some key states. Those are the places that Donald Trump and his lieutenants were calling into to try to get some changes to the slates of electors. And that could actually portend something really important about whether our, our presidential election will go smoothly in 2024. You talk about that race. I've talked to my contacts in Nevada, and they think that one of the election deniers very well could get in.